Hello and welcome to the second episode of History Stories. I'm Dr. Megan Easley Walsh. With a PhD in history, as an author, a writing consultant, and an editor, my life is full of history and stories. With that in mind, this podcast goal is to explore some of those stories of history. This will include diving into antiques and interesting historical artifacts that I found, looking behind the scenes at inspiration for my novels, taking a peek at places I visited, and uncovering new topics of interest. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. In my living room, I have several vases. Many are made by Irish potters and are less than six inches in height, but one of them is entirely different. It's made of brass and is about a foot tall. Cherries and leaves are crafted into the vase, and it is etched with the years 1914 to 1918. I'm sure you've guessed by now that this vase commemorates the First World War. This vase is a story of transformation, though, from war to life. The object that is now a vase began its life as the casing of a shell. This vase is a piece of trench art. Trench art was made by soldiers, prisoners of war, or sometimes civilians using the scraps of wood or metal they could find, or sometimes creating work such as embroidery in the midst of conflict. In the last podcast, I shared with you my assertion that in a world often bent on destruction, art is a radical act of creation. The creation of trench art is one manifestation of this, and cherries, incidentally, can symbolize new beginnings. The combination of art and warfare is a subject I explored in my second novel, What Edward Heard. Returning from the Western Front in 1916, Edward is partly deaf. He thinks he's encountered the most life-changing events in war, but it is what he finds in the attic of his new home that forever changes him. Having witnessed so much destruction, Edward clings to the endurance of objects and decides that he will open an antique shop. But objects are more than their material composition. They are symbols of resistance, of transformation, and of life. Sometimes these objects take on a life of their own. In what Edward heard, one object in particular takes on significance and a parallel journey with Edward's from the object's creation to the time that Edward encounters it unfolds. I'll be talking more about that in a future episode of History Stories. For now, I'd like to stay with Edward's story in the First World War and how it connects with my own experiences. In the first episode, I spoke about my many weekends spent at the Lorraine American Cemetery in France. Nearby is a site of the Maginot Line. Underground, damp and dank, we climbed into the decades of the past. We made our way down the stairs below ground to the place that was meant to be a shield. This line was built to hold back the German offensive should it ever try to invade France again. Unfortunately, during the Second World War, the Maginot Line was bypassed when the Nazi troops marched through Belgium. The barriers to war were breached. The war to end all wars was not to be the last. Instead, it was named the first. The reason they wanted to ensure that no such thing happened again is because the First World War was unthinkably horrific. It would shake the world in a way that had not happened before. Battles, trenches, and poisoned gas would shatter lives. But something else was also lost in the war as explained here by historian Juliet Nicholson in her book, The Great Silence, 1918-1920, to Living in the Shadow of the Great War. Quote, After the catastrophic death of Victorian certainties, silence was beginning to seem like the only possible articulation of the truth. End quote. In my novel, What Edward Heard, 
that silence wraps itself around Edward, at least for a time, at least in part, through his diminished hearing from the battlefield. Edward represents the shattered lives that, thanks to medical progress, could and did survive. He represents the many who had to make something where war had taken everything. Meaning was sought. This inspired new forms of music, fashion, and art as the world grappled to understand what had happened. After the cacophony of war, there was a new type of silence, one that had witnessed, one that remembered. Just as I mentioned in the last episode that the beaches of Normandy were peaceful when I visited, as I walked through the former battlefields of World War I and visited sites such as Verdun, they too were peaceful. Abraham Lincoln, speaking of another battlefield and another war, this time during the American Civil War, on November 19, 1863, in his Gettysburg Address, said, quote, We cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract, end quote. Bravery may happen in war, but bravery surely comes in peace. In peace, a consecration of life is made. On those battlefields I walked, grasses, trees, and flowers are now present again, where once the land was parched and scarred. Where war hollows out, life fills in. It happened to the land, it happened to my vase. That metamorphosis you see is our business, not just the writers, not just the historians. I extend that invitation here to all peoples. We have the power to transform our battlefields into places of peace. It may not look like anything grand. It may look like preserving one object, one story, one link to humanity at a time, as Edward and my novel did. I would like to leave you with this observation by the Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw. Quote, We are made wise not by the recollection of our past, but by the responsibility for our future. End quote. Thank you for joining me for this episode of History Stories. To find out more about my writing and my research, visit me at MeganEasleyWalsh.com and you can find my novel, What Edward Heard, on Amazon. I look forward to sharing more history stories with you in the next episode. Music